All right, welcome everybody um, to our presentation on minimum viable governance. We're um, sorry we couldn't be there in person, but we're excited to um, share some work we've been doing on lightweight rules for collaboration um, with me on the legal side at GitHub and, and Ashley on the OSPO side. Very excited to be here virtually as well. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to drop them in Slack and we'll try to get to them. If we don't during the talk, we'll get to them at the end. We'll set aside some time for Q&A. So just a, a quick um, description of who we are. Um, I'm, I'm Justin Colonino. I'm a director of uh, developer policy here at GitHub and also an open source lawyer, both I'm on the GitHub side and I also dabble from time to time um, over on the Microsoft side as well. And I'm Ashley Wolf. I joined GitHub a few months ago to lead our open source program office. I help staff here with their open source engagements, and I also work with companies that are building out and growing their open source program offices. So we'll get started today by talking a little bit about OSPOs, not necessarily what an OSPO is, but I do want to share what the OSPO does at GitHub. At the core, our OSPO helps developers to reduce friction points. We're a resource for engineers that have questions about any of their open source engagements, like contributing to open source projects, if they have a question about signing CLAs, bringing third-party code into the company, as well as releasing new code out there to GitHub. And we help with company open source strategy and policy as well. Our OSPO really relies on our internal and external partners to be successful and set up those policies and processes around open source at GitHub. And what we found that we're really great at is creating simple processes for our engineers to help them with open source. And as developers, you know, when you want to do something with open source or you go to someone for help, you don't want it to be a heavyweight process. You want it to be something lightweight and efficient for you. And at GitHub, Open source is in our DNA. We know people, we know the open source community inside and out here. And like many organizations, it's really easy for us to work with open source when we have total control of projects. But when we want to collaborate outside of this organization and outside of these partnerships, it gets challenging. Working in OSPOs at other companies, I've experienced this firsthand. Engineers come to us and ask about creating an open source project, wanting to work with others and third parties. And we start going to all those internal partners to get the conversation started, figure out what it will look like and how it's going to work. We ask questions like, do we need to go to a foundation? Do we need funding? Should it be in private repos? Do we need NDAs signed across the board? And it takes time with all the responses and a lot of back and forth happens. And that's even before the lawyers get involved. Sorry, Justin. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and all the while, the developers are halting work on this project or not even able to get started until they get an answer from us and all of the folks involved. So when I heard Justin was working on NBG, I was super excited and wanted to learn more about it. So here's what NBG is solving. Everything starts out well and good when it's just one maintainer on a project. When you have that total control and direction, things operate fairly smoothly. The problems start when the project moves from having one maintainer to expanding. We've called this the one plus N problem. Things get complicated when you move from one maintainer to one plus N maintainers of your open source projects. So for example, you might want to work with another company or organization on a project together. A bunch of questions come up around where to host it, questions about governance and decision making. Suddenly you need to figure out how to address all of these things before you can get started. And that's where MVG comes into play. And I'll pass it over to Justin to talk about that. Thanks, Ashley. And, you know, I, I, I want to echo some of the, the things that, that Ashley said earlier around the idea of like driving efficiency and processes and, and partnerships. You know, in the legal department um, at 
at Microsoft and at GitHub, you know, one of the things we try to do is to, you know, cut through red tape to make the process as simple and efficient as possible. That's done so it's done, but also so that it's done in a responsibly, uh, responsible legal manner. And so, you know, MVG is an outcropping of that of that philosophy um, for solving that one plus n problem. And I'm very happy to have you know such a great partner in Ashley to kind of you know drive these. Um, you know, drive these uh, solutions home. So what MVG is in its essence is really just encapsulating the way that communities work um, in a lightweight way done well once so that we, lawyers don't need to be involved again, um, you know, and we don't need, you don't need to go around and reinvent the wheel if you want to stand up a lightweight collaboration that doesn't need, for example, you know, a lot of funding or funding, or hold money, that kind of thing. You just want to sit down and collaborate with some third party on an open source project in a way that's safe and responsible and, and, and in a way that you can co-maintain that projects or an affiliated suite of projects. And so, you know, we already have that on GitHub. You may have heard of it, it's called like an organization. A lot of people will stand up organizations with friends um, to do particular things. Um, a question arises, you know, not often, but sometimes, like what happens to the ownership of that organization if somebody leaves or, um, or, or you know, somebody wants to join, et cetera. Um, and so what MVG does is it provides that organizational structure for the organization and the projects um, underneath. So at the top level, there's what we'll call a technical steering committee. That steering committee makes decision about the overall direction of the organization and the collaboration and touch points between the organization's projects. And that's governed in a consensus-based way, but you can fall back to a vote. Um, a critical piece of this is, you know, negotiate who's going to be on the steering committee. You have a bunch of folks, maybe companies, maybe independent developers getting together. You need to think to yourself, okay, who are the right set of people so that we can have a, a good conversation um, in that steering committee? Who do we want to add to that steering committee? Um, and how are we going to, how does that steering committee um, set up the power dynamics inside our organization um, based on its makeup and, and who's there? Um, and so that's at the top level of that organization. Then underneath, um, you have uh, individual projects, each with a lightweight consensus-based governance model. And frankly, consensus-based governance, a, a, it's, you know, it's how a lot of um, open source projects already operate. Again, we're just trying to encapsulate and capture the way that most open source uh, projects and organizations work today so that we don't need to rewrite it every time we create a new um, organization or project. Next slide, please. So let's get a, a little bit deeper into that um, um, structure. So MBG is an agreement and it live, the agreement lives in the um, in the organization's repository. And it's signed there and, you know, the signatories are public for, you know, who is on the steering committee and, and who are the maintainers. And the agreement um, essentially covers, you know, five things. Um, the first is a decision-making process I just described. The second is a, a trademark policy. So if you're getting together with a bunch of uh, folks to build an open source uh, project, um, those people should control how the uh, trademark trademark works. And if you have a bunch of uh, companies or, in, or independent developers all working on a project, the hallmark of a true open source project is that the trademark um, is used by anybody under the same terms. And typically what those terms look like, and as we're capturing the trademark policy, is that you can't call your product, your commercial product, like what our project name is. You can't trade on the project's goodwill in your commercial um, in your commercial project. And that's capturing the trademark policy. Um, all the participants agree to be bound by that project, uh, that policy. So there really is a neutral trademark ownership and people can kind of trust um, that project moving forward and, and trust that people won't be trading off its, off its goodwill. There's an antitrust policy. A lot of people think that this, this feels a little bit heavyweight. Um, the antitrust policy is designed, you know, again, so that we don't need to reinvent the wheel. This is designed to work both for, you know, the big, you know, heavyweight companies collaborating together, 
the, the same way it would if, you know, Ashley and I wanted to get together and start our own project on the side, um, you know, not affiliated with any of our, our companies. Um, would Ashley and I need an antitrust policy? Like, maybe not, but it's there and it's a good reminder if, you know, we hit it big um, that in, in, in our competitors that we shouldn't be collaborating on the project um, in, in violation of, of antitrust laws. Um, there's a code of conduct, and again, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We 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 chose the code of conduct that is the you know most popular one um, on GitHub, which is the contributor covenant. Um, and then there's project selection criteria around kind of like licensing, um, you know, etc. For various types of projects, open source, open data, um, you know, etc. And so we we launched uh, MBG about a month ago. Um, it, with a blog post, um, it, it's live in the repo, it's in beta. Um, we are really excited to get more feedback on it. Um, the feedback uh, so far has been around, you know, what about Singleton projects? Um, you, you have this two-tier structure, is that really minimum viable governance? Um, you know, should that be collapsed in certain scenarios? Um, I think it's a good question. There's an issue tracking that. Come, tell me what you think. Tell us what you think. It'd be we, we, we really want to hear it. Um, again, the antitrust point I just addressed, and you know why do you need a trademark policy? Again, the the idea is so that um, others don't trade off of the goodwill of the project that the the group has um, you know collaborated on, and people can trust uh, that um, that that origin of source um, that is the community that's been sprung up around um, the project. So in the links there, um, it's pretty easy to remember and type in if you want to visit us. Awesome. Thanks, Justin. And thank you, everyone, who's been with us throughout the talk and to the folks behind the scene that set this all up for us so we could present during OSPOCon. We'd love to hear your thoughts about MBG. So if, you, if you're still here, drop in a note in Slack. We're happy to answer any questions, take comments and feedback. And thank you all for being with us here today. That's right. And and um, if you want to reach out, if you're watching this, you know, async and we're not in the Slack channel, you know, you, our contact information, our GitHub handles are at, at the beginning of this presentation. Feel free to reach out directly. We'd love to hear from you. Definitely. Thanks all.